All right, we're talking to you today, new series, Advent today. We're, we're entering into the Christmas season, and I'm very excited about Christmas because of who it represents. It represents Jesus, and so I'm ecstatic about Jesus Christ. Let me ask you a question. What? I got me a piece of tape on my board today. What is Christmas all about? So what would you say, sister, to him? Um, I asked him, is it about Jesus? Oh, <laughs> sister's a smart one. So um, Christmas is about your family. So let's, let's write that down then. Um, Christmas is about family. How many of y'all agree with that? By the way, that's why Jesus did come. So he left his family so that he could bless your family. Okay? So family. Christmas is about family. What else? What did you say Christmas is about, Lila? Jesus. It's about Jesus. Okay? All right. Why is it about Jesus? Because that was the day he was born on. Ah. Uh -huh. Because... Jesus was actually born on some day. We don't know exactly when he was born, but, but we do celebrate it on December 25th, Jesus' birth. Okay? What else is Christmas about? And don't all of y'all talk at once. Look, look, right there. It's Pastor Eric. Don't all of y'all talk at once, okay, because you can only have one talk at a time. You know something so beautiful? If you look in the... Uh the book of Genesis. Yeah. And uh, it's found in the 12th chapter, I think, verse 3. Yes, sir. There was a man named Abraham, and God spoke to him, and he said that in you, through your heritage, all the families, <laughs> not a few, not one, but all the families of the earth would be blessed, and we're a part of that. So Christmas is a fulfillment of that. You know, that was one scripture. I thought about that scripture, but I went with... Uh, um, Genesis 28, 14, because it says in your seed. And so it means the same thing, but I wanted, I wanted to actually bring out that the Bible says, and the promise was to Abraham and to his seed. He said, in your seed would all the families of the earth be born, uh, would be blessed in Genesis 28, 14. So that's another reference that, that you can uh, reference. I was just looking at 12, 1 through 3, and let's just read it real quick because that's a promise. And um, I memorized that many, many years ago. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get out of your country and from your kindred, leave your family, and from your father's house, and go to a land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you. Come on, can y'all receive the blessing of God today? And I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. Look at your neighbor and say, you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you. And I will curse them that curse you. I mean, you know that better make sure that they're not under the Abrahamic covenant if you do something crazy to them. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed, shout somebody. So Advent then, Advent is a time that we start to celebrate about four weeks out before the birth of Jesus, and what we start to do is we start to prepare ourselves for the arrival of the noble, talking about Jesus. How many of y'all believe that Jesus is the greatest gift that was ever given? I love, I love what 2 Corinthians 9.15 says. 
And let me see if I can remember it. It says, thanks be unto God for the unspeakable gift that he might. And then um, Romans 1.11 says that Paul said that I wish that I would be able to come unto you that I may impart unto you a spiritual gift that you might be established. So this is what I was thinking about concerning Christmas. During this Advent season, I think that we are celebrating, shout somebody. I think that it's about gifts, but not necessarily just physical gifts because God has dealt with my heart. I think we need to be giving some spiritual gifts out. And I want to, in fact... Um, later in the service, and you can sit down, Lala, later in the service, I'm going to call you and brother back up with your daddy, and we're going to lay hands on y'all, because we've been meditating all week about your spiritual gifts, both of y'all, and we're going to impart a spiritual gift unto you. So how many of you know we need to give out more than just physical gifts? I'm believing during this season, are y'all alive? that we need to give out spiritual gifts. So we'll be talking about gifts. We believe it's about family. And we believe that Jesus brings hope to the entire world. If it wouldn't be for Jesus, come on now, there would be no hope. And so this is what I think Christmas is about. And this is my three words. How'd y'all like my little, that's, that's homemade now. And that took some effort. Now, it came off of a community box. I was able to tear it in the kitchen. I was looking for something to hide what Christmas is about because there's three things I want to talk about. Christmas, of course, is about Jesus being the greatest gift. But in him being the greatest gift, it's about family. It's about love. And it's about giving. So the three words I want to think about today, the three things I want all of us to get, is that Christmas is about family. That means that if there's some things in your family that you need to make right, somebody needs to humble themselves. You know, when you got two goats... On a little narrow path with a drop-off on each side, somebody's going to have to humble themselves. Somebody's going to have to bow down while the other goat jumps over. <laughs> Somebody has got to say, hey, look, I, I just submit, man, look, even if, even if, they're not right. Somebody's got to be humble enough to say, look, man, if whatever I've done to offend you, I'm just asking you to forgive me and let's, let's put this under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and let's come together as family like Jesus intended for us to come together and let's be a family with love and, and connect it where we serve and love each other. All right, so here's what the Scripture says. Acts chapter 3 Verse 25 and 26. Christmas is about family. Here's the word of the Lord. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers. And this is what he said to Abraham. Pastor Eric brought Genesis 12, which is right. And in your seed shall all the kindreds, all the families of the earth be blessed, shout somebody. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Now this is what I was thinking of when we were receiving the Lord's Supper. I was thinking about us being kidnapped. How many of you believe that we were kidnapped? 
we were brought under bondage. Are, are y'all alive? All right. Okay. So we were caught in our sin, right? We were debtors. We were in bondage. The, the, the price to pay for our sin was death. For the wage of sin is death. And so I thought, oh my God, we're kidnapped. Our captors have, have um, demanded a ransom for us that we cannot pay within ourselves because if we pay it within ourselves, we're doomed for eternity in hell. So, so God sent his son Jesus from his family, from heaven, to pay the price that we couldn't pay. Come on now. And he gave us eternal life. So shout somebody. I, I was just thinking about, and that's what the scripture says. It says, unto you first God, having raised up your son Jesus Christ, you sent him to bless you it bless us in turning away every one of you from your iniquities, from your sins. So shout somebody. That's the promise. So here's what I thought about concerning family. I thought about in our families, God's intention was always to bless us. If God's perfect will is, is that that in your seed shall all the families be blessed, Abram. And if my family is not walking in the blessing, how many of you know that we got to get something right? We got to do something different. We got to make something right, meaning that we got to get the greatest gift first and foremost in our family. Now, I was thinking about my, my kids and... Uh, some funny stories about us because in family, it's, it's not always a peaches and ice cream. No, there's good and then there's bad. I was thinking when I was being raised, <clears throat> one time in the John Myers, is, I hope he's with us today online. John Myers we, we grew up together. John came to live with me from the third grade, <clears throat> Pastor John. And so, Pastor John, how many of you know God creates all of us and we're unique within ourselves? And John Myers had this, this, this desire to catch every snake in the world. And so everywhere we went, John Myers was always looking for a snake. I know that's crazy. <clears throat> so one day, John found a rattlesnake. Good news is he was just a baby. And so we brought the snake in, in a jar into the house, and my dad, what's the thing my dad would say about a rattlesnake in the house? You can't keep that snake in the house. How many of you know that But we like the snake? We wanted the snake in the house. So <laughs> we hid the, the rattlesnake in an aquarium in our house. And then we went to school the next day. When we came home the next day, the aquarium was sideways and the snake was gone. And we didn't want Dad to, to know that the snake has gotten out into the house. So when's the last time you tore your room up, turned the bed over, under dresser, looking for a rattlesnake in your, in your room? <laughs> well, my dad, I'm talking about family here. Well, my dad walked around and said, hey, boys, how was school today? And we all stopped, you know, like we wasn't doing nothing. 
And it was great. It was great. And he walked by, and we went to tearing up again. Looking, We didn't want him to know we'd lost the doggone snake in the house. But then he made another round around the house, and by the way, he was playing with us. He said, you boys looking for something? We just held our head down. John, give me a comment, brother. Let <laughs> laugh out loud. <laughs> you got to give me a comment. Help me with the story, John. <laughs> and we just held our head down. He says, boys, I told you not to bring that snake in this doggone house. And I got the snake out. So I'm telling you, he let us stew for about three hours. We were sweating it. Uh, Come on now, I know y'all had a family like ours, right? <laughs> Look, you want me to tell you a, a, a funny story about your dad and Uncle Z? One time, me and Jeannie, we were staying in the trailer park up here because we were renovating this, this church, and um, we just ordered a, a trailer, and they set it up, and that's where we lived because we were driving back and forth to St. Francisville, and, and so we need to be closer to Baker. And uh, so me and Jeannie went out of town. We left one of our guys, Wade Bordelon, at the house with Zach, our son, and Zach, 14 years old, decides to take the keys to the Suburban while Wade was sleeping. He snuck into his room on the nightstand and got the keys and went and picked up his friend. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you the story about this one because this is where the, ca the straw broke the camel's back with me. <clears throat> and uh, so anyway, you know me, I'm just going on. But um, when, the, when he pushed the vehicle back, he, killed, he got a run and start when he came back. And the vehicle was sideways in the parking lot because he didn't want to the engine running when he pulled it back up to the house. And so Wade, when he got up the next day, he says, I thought something was funny. I didn't, but you know, being a guy just went on. You know how we do. But then his mother got to asking some questions. She asked, um, because the little friend was at the house, and you know, women with inquiring minds, they're going to ask some questions like, how did the friend get to the house? I never even thought about anything like that. And the first thing Zach said, well, my brother Sterling went and picked him up. Now, you got to know Sterling and Zachary. Immediately, his mother says, Sterling ain't going to do that. She said, that's a lie. I accept it. All right, well, your brother went and got your friend, and that's why he's here. And um, so then I pulled, um, she got to inquiring, and I found out that he lied to us, and he actually stowed the vehicle that night at 14 years old and went and got his friend out of town in some kind of way back with the vehicle sideways and Zach had had a downward trend in his stock. Meaning that that wasn't the only thing that me as a dad could see that he was getting off. He was off. But I realized if he would have hit somebody or something, he could have killed somebody. Something terrible could have happened. And so this is when I, I told him, I said, you get your butt in that truck, 
And me and you are going to take a ride to the woods in Mississippi where they can't hear little boys scream. Because today you're getting delivered. His mother, oh, where are you taking him? Where are you taking said, you shut up. Because uh, if I don't reach my son, I'm going to lose him. I'm the disciplinarian. I'm the dad. I'm not your friend. I'm your parent. I love you and bless you, but doggone it, you out of control. You're stealing vehicles at night and, and on the road. You don't even have a driver's license. You ain't even old enough to have a driver's license. So you get your butt in that truck, and Jeannie knew I was serious. Where are we going? Where are we going? I said, we're going to get some deliverance. When we got up by Mississippi, by them gravel roads, because I know some roads that's in the middle of nowhere. They ain't nothing. I said, now let me tell you how this is going to work, son. There's two ways you can get delivered today. But you are getting delivered I said, I can either take a, a, a stick off of one of these oak trees and beat the devil out of you, because I'm ready now. Or I can lay hands on you in the name of Jesus, and you can receive the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will deliver you. I said, I'm fine with either way. But you getting delivered. He said, Dad, I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. So we didn't even have to get into Mississippi. We were headed that away. I was on Spillman Road when he, when he decided he wanted the Holy Ghost. True story. And so we prayed on the side of the road for him to receive the power of the Holy Spirit to deliver him. And then he, we signed a covenant where he signed a covenant with God and with me and his mother that he would live his life for the glory of God, that he would do certain things. He had to graduate school and he had to get on track. And that was a turning point for Zach Sinclair. Now, that didn't totally turn him, all right? But, but that at least got him out of stealing vehicles in the middle of the night and got us to a whole nother level. Are y'all alive out there? So, when I talk about family, how many of you know that we all got families? But we got to submit our families to God. We've got to trust God with our families. Um, the got, next thing Christmas is about is it's about love. I got to say something right quick. Um, it, it's Sterling's fault, too, because um, Sterling broke us in. We trusted that boy way too much. And so by the time Zach got up and no, started all that stuff. No, you trusted him too much. Well, all right. And they, y'all formed that gang against me. That, and we was hitting for a minute. Yeah, and then y'all, they turned uh, on Where me. I was the villain in all three of y'all were the good he, guys. He and, was the villain. He was so mean for a while. He come home hard and everything. But I was a disciplinary trying to keep my family He was, and I, did, and I didn't respect him on that level. You know, but it, it, that's why God instituted a man and a woman, because everybody's got their role to play. And it's hard to get that without that. Now, if you're single... God will make provision. He'll send a woman or a man figures into your children's life. You got to trust God for it. But initially, God instituted it with a man and a woman because we all have different makeup and we all provide something that the kids need. But my husband was very hard, so I felt like I had to protect my kids. <laughs> I was, and and I've, <laughs> in all honesty, I, but but I I needed to kind of you got to mature, you got to develop. We all and, do, so and, we're just uh, trying to share our mess ups with you. So. Yeah. So we, we made lots of mistakes in our family, and I made lots of mistakes even in this church. But I choose to grow. I choose to mature. I choose to move forward. 
And even my mistakes, God has used them to teach me great lessons so that I become better. Come on now. And by the way, we're better together. Praise the Lord. All right. So Christmas is about love. And I heard another story about a, a father who had a son and he had his friend's son with them. And they went sailing. They went sailing off the coast of the Pacific. And while they were sailing, they ran into a terrible storm. And they fought the storm, but ultimately the boat couldn't take the waves and they capsized. And um, both of the boys were thrown off the sailboat and they were drowned. And he had a lifeline and he thought to himself, my son knows Jesus Christ. My son is saved. But my son's friend doesn't know the Lord yet. So he hollered to his son, I love you, son. And he threw the rope to the son's friend. And he pulled the son's friend in. And when he got him on board and went back to try to get his own son, his own son had slipped under the water and his body was never found. The guy told this story in front of a church. And when he got finished telling the story, he sat down and there were two teenagers that were in the church. And they went up to him and said, hey, that was a, that was a hard story. It's it really not realistic. You, you said you, you threw the rope to the son's friend in hope that he might get saved. You didn't even have a sure. He said, well, that's exactly what God did for us. He said, and you need to know something else. That son's friend was me. I wonder who would say today, as God's holding the rope in Christ in hopes that you might grab it, I wonder who would say, Brother Ricky, I'll grab the lifeline of God. I'll, I'll grab a hold to God. If that's you, would you just raise your hand seriously? You'll grab a hold of salvation. Because the Bible says, and I want to pray for you. I wonder who would say, hey, man, God commended his love towards us. That even while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us, the ungodly, Romans 5, 8. I wonder who would say, hey, uh, Brother Ricky, I received Jesus. I want Jesus Christ. I want that lifeline. One more time, if that's you, raise your hand. I need to recommit my life to the Lord. Can we just pray right now before I, I move forward in this story? Would you just say with me, if that's you and... You'll grab the lifeline. Would you stand up right now for the Lord? Would you just stand up? And if you've never given your heart to the Lord Jesus and received the love of God, now's the opportunity, even online, right now. You can make Jesus Lord of your life. Let's pray. Say, Lord, right now, I believe. You sent Jesus because of your love for me. A lifeline to deliver me, to give me eternal life. And I receive Jesus Christ as my lifeline, eternal life right now in the name of Jesus. 
And just keep your heads bowed just for a second and let the presence of God touch you right this second. The Spirit of God just moving, even in the airways now, in the name of Jesus. That's the greatest gift. Okay, you guys may be seated. Thank you so much for your love for God and responding to God. So Christmas is all about family. I mean, you know, none of us have a perfect family, and that's all right. Sometimes you can do what's wrong and learn what's right. Imagine that. <laughs> you become a witness either way. I mean, you can either be a knucklehead, and we can learn from your knuckleheadism what not to do as a witness, or you can actually be a witness for God, and we can see what to do. <laughs> Are y'all, <laughs> Erica, <laughs> Corey, <laughs> wait, uh, Pastor Eric says we all change up on being knuckleheads, praise God. All right, you guys are so great. All right, so this is what I wanted to talk about is, this, um, is giving. Because Christmas is about family. Say family. Christmas is about love. And Christmas is about giving. The first gift is the greatest gift, which is Jesus. In fact, we wouldn't even give presents if the greatest gift wouldn't have been given to us. So actually, Jesus is the reason for the season. Come on now. Um, by the way, we celebrate not something. We celebrate someone. Because let me tell you, if I make it about a something, it'll be about me, a party. If I make it about someone, it'll be about them. Shout somebody. It'll be about Jesus. So, so we celebrate not something. We celebrate someone, and that someone is Jesus. If you believe that, say amen. All right. So when we think about giving, I thought this year and really fell under conviction in the presence of God that if we can give physical gifts, why can't we give spiritual gifts? Like Romans 1.11 says that I long to come unto you that I may impart unto you a spiritual gift that you might be established. And then I thought about my grandchildren. I thought about, all right, we, we want to give them physical gifts. We want to give them, we want them to be able to open up gifts on Christmas. We're going to celebrate Jesus by giving physical gifts, but let's give some spiritual gifts. So I'm going to call them up right now. Come on, Lala Lala. Come on, um, dad, brother. And now listen, I did some thinking and I want you to think about, because here's what I want us to do. Uh, miracle place people. I want us this year not only to give materialistic gifts, but I want us to give spiritual gifts also. Man, we want to make sure that they have something to unwrap. So I contacted Sterling, dad, and I said, hey, this is what I see in Lala. I said, in Lala, I see leadership. Because it almost gets on your nerves sometimes because she's like pushy. How many of you know if somebody's pushing, they might be a leader? You know, and she always, and this is what, what you sent me. Um, Sterling... What did you tell me? Um, and I got your text. Can you uh, remember your text? Yeah, he was just asking me um, what sort of gifts or talents um, I thought my kids had. And I thought about it for a minute and 
Uh, with Lila. She's we thought about it more than a minute. So. Because, listen, I don't want you to just lay hands on your kids. I want you to really seek God and really ask God, what do you want to do with my family? What, what's your will? Okay. Okay, and uh, in addition to the, the leadership and um, other things he mentioned, I think uh, she has a good gift of uh, teaching, and and that's the reason she seems uh, kind of bossy and, and pushy sometimes. Is because she sees how to do something a certain way, and she just wants to. She has a, a desire to show you how to do it as well, just like her. And uh, so I, I see that as a great gift and skill that she has. And for uh, for my son, he's he's got some gift of mercy. Like he's got very, very uh, pure heart, um, and he, he never looks to take advantage of anyone that, um, even though he can take uh, advantage of people, he, he won't do it, and he's, he's very caring and do anything for you, and uh, yeah, that's just a couple of things. That... So this is what you said. You said Sterling has the gift of mercy. He will not take advantage of people, even when he knows he can. Lala has the gift of teaching. She appears bossy at times, but is constantly trying to help people understand things the best way that she can. They have both been blessed with amazing gifts and abilities. This is from Dad. And attributes but I believe that they can operate in them efficiently because of love. The love and support they have been given at home as we raise them allows their gifts to cultivate and be all that they can be. I think spiritual gifts are planted in everyone as seeds. If they are fed, watered, and in good soil then they will flourish. Then he gives... Sterling is very analytical. He's a genius. And he always gives you a tagline, and this is his tagline that he gives me. Don't forget to feed your gifts. So, right now... Let's put up Romans chapter 12, verse 6 through 8. Let's go ahead and put that up. Now, the Bible has many different gifts in it, but we're just taking some gifts from Romans chapter 12. These are like gifts that, that are motivational gifts. These are gifts that you use in your everyday that we believe that God has put in you. God is the gift giver. And so we want to see these gifts that God has given you used for God and that it would benefit your lives and the lives of people around you. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. How many know that it's going to take God's grace to use the gifts he gives us? Whether prophecy, now look, this word prophecy here, if you do a study, and I'm doing this because I believe that this is one of your gifts. I'm not thinking that you're predicting the future with this. This is like a simple gift. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, and I don't even think I gave you all that, but this is what 1 Corinthians 14, 3 actually says. It says that he that prophesy, prophesies unto men, and I'm quoting it, unto edification, exhortation, and comfort. So just leave it there for a second. So this gift, brother, and um, we'll get to your gifts. This gift is the ability that God has given you to see needs in other people's lives. And when you see those 
needs, you have the other gift, mercy, that comes up in you, and you actually get an inspiring word. It's, it's a word that God gives you for the people so that you can help them, and what it does is, is it edifies. Edifies means it it's builds people up. You're always looking to raise people up, not tear them down, but to lift them up. That's a gift that God has given you. And also, he's given you the gift of exhortation. That means that you're an encourager, that you want to make sure that people around you are not discouraged, but encouraged. You want to, and then you want to make sure that they're comforted. So God has blessed you with a great gift. So Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, um, Sterling. Me and Dad hold Sterling Sinclair before you, and we release the gift to edify, the gift to exhort, encourage, the gift to comfort people, the gift of mercy, the gift to serve other people. We release the power of the Holy Ghost in little Sterling's life so that everywhere he goes, he will see the needs of other people. He will immediately uh, address those needs and that he will serve people by your inspiration as you speak through him into other people to build them up. Now bless Sterling all the days of his life with these gifts and show us in time to come even more gifts that you are giving him, Father. You want to bless. So, Father, we bless little Sterling right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Lala, now you just received a gift. You just, we just unwrapped a spiritual gift for you, man, a spiritual gift. Now, Lala, let's keep reading. Verse 7. The ministry gift is a serving gift. That's another gift you have. So make sure you wait on your ministry and do it with grace. And then also, he that teaches or she that teaches on teaching. That teaching gift is a desire that you have to instruct people, to help people people move forward with their lives and you want to show them the right way so this teaching gift is an, an instruction gift where immediately when you see someone your desire is to go instruct them it seems like you're bossy seems like you're running over somebody pushes someone. but your heart is a gift that God has given you to help them and if they'll listen to you you'll be able to help them she says, I am bossy. <laughs> and he that exhorts, that's encouragement, on encouragement. And he that gives, let him do it with simplicity. There's a gift of giving. He that ruleth, and this is your other gift that I want to address. This gift is a leadership gift. And I want to make sure y'all tell all the kids when you go to school, say, guess what our family got? Not only did we get uh, physical gifts, but we got spiritual gifts. And all the schools going to want spiritual gifts. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Joe, Joe got uh, Spider-Man. And Lala got leadership. Y'all better shout. So this gift right here, he that ruleth, she that ruleth, let, do it with diligence. Do it with, with eagerness. Man, go for it, man. And then mercy is another gift that brother has. He that shows mercy, do it with the right heart. Be cheerful when you do it. So let's lay hands on her. And dad, this is what I see right now. Now look, there's more gifts that... We all, as we grow, we start to see more gifts in our lives. But, but right now, we see leadership in Lala, and we see teaching in Lala. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we hold Lala Sinclair up before you.
we impart a spiritual gift unto her in accordance with your word, God, that you have called her to teach. You've called her to instruct, Father. She's not bossy. She just wants to lead. We release the leadership gift into Lala that you will use her to lead for you and for your glory. Now we bless Lala. We bless Sterling now with spiritual gifts in the name of Jesus. Be with them all the days of their life. Bless them, Father God. Meet every need they have. Let them use their gifts for your glory Father in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and all the church says amen and amen the last in giving remember Christmas is about it's giving is third what's the first thing it's about family love giving so this year would you prayerfully pray about your children, your grandchildren, and, and start seeking God about what gifts they have and impart a spiritual gift unto them. And last is this in giving. There was a time when I was gone away, and I won't tell you where I was because you already know. I couldn't provide Christmas for my family. But there were gracious people that had extra. And they stepped up to the plate to make sure that my kids got presents and had Christmas even though I wasn't there because it wasn't their fault that I wasn't there. So this year, when you're shopping, if you've got enough for your family, would you consider a $10 gift card? A $20 gift card, $100 gift card, and putting that in the basket here at Miracle Place Church or in those boxes on the wall. And we will make sure that a family that doesn't have to provide for Christmas for, for them, we will make sure that they get those gift cards so that they can have a Christmas and you'll be given with Jesus. Come on now. Come on, stand up all over this place. Thank you so much. Father, I just lift up Miracle Place people, God. Thank you so much for their families. God, thank you so much for the love of God in their families. And thank you, Lord, that we are givers, Father. Now bless your people today in the name of Jesus. Meet every need they have. We love them. Let us celebrate Advent, Lord, as we get ready for the coming of Jesus in our lives. Bless your people now in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody says, amen. Have a great, great, great day. Look at somebody and smile. Give them a little touch. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.